this video, I take my newly purchased Hasselblad X2D out on its second trip, this time to Rocky Mountain National Park for a quick weekend of winter landscape photography. And having lived in Colorado before, I was well aware of the amazing opportunities the park provides for access to some of its most iconic locations, thanks to clear roads and packed trails, something that isn't very common to find in the Intermountain West in the middle of winter. On this day, my main agenda was to be at Emerald Lake in time for sunrise and pass by Dream Lake and Hayaha Lake to see what other photo opportunities I could find. Passing by Dream Lake with the moon setting behind the mountains illuminating the clouds was almost a dreamlike landscape to witness and something that was begging me to stop and take out my camera, except I knew that the following day the moon would be there again but in more favorable conditions closer to sunrise, and so I bypassed it for the time being to keep on schedule to make it to Emerald Lake in time. When I arrived at Emerald Lake, I was pleased to find that the surrounding peaks were unobscured, and yet there was plenty of mist and clouds setting the scene for some dramatic photos. As I began composition hunting, knowing there would be no reflection on the snow-covered lake, I wanted to get up high in order to have additional perspective, and more importantly, I needed to find an interesting foreground. I looked off to the left, and in a big snowbank, I saw a line of perfectly spaced Christmas trees right in front of the lake and I knew I had my composition. The natural colors straight out of the camera and the Hasselblad are so perfect, the temptation is there to not even touch them at all and any post-processing I did on the images on this trip was almost negligible. Retraining your brain to not automatically over-process your photos and posts can be difficult, but I truly believe this natural Hasselblad look is more pleasing to the eye. It was time to move on to my next destination, Lake Hayaha. The trail to Hayaha was much more difficult to follow with deeper snow requiring the use of snowshoes. At one point I post told almost chest deep and looked down and saw there was much further to go and I found myself in a tree well. I got myself out of that precarious situation but it was a reminder of how winter hiking can turn into a disaster in a real quick hurry. By the time I reached Lake Hayaha, it was so windy and miserable that I filmed very little video, but I did find a nice setting for a quick photo. On the way back to the trailhead, I attached the 45mm lens and kept the Hasselblad in my hand as I made my way down the trail, capturing a few scenes I noticed. Using exclusively primes is a new experience for me, and while I believe the extra image quality you gain is worth it, it does require a little extra care and attention to composition, which I think does, in a way, create better photos, image quality aside. In my prior experience, my camera generally stayed in my bag except when I'm at pre-planned locations, but with the Hasselblad, the ergonomics make it tempting as a camera to keep in your hand throughout your hike. This can lead to making more images en route to your destination, which often end up being the most unique and interesting from the trip. After a midday break watching college basketball, I made my way back out in the afternoon to look for some elk. It wasn't long before I found one.
So coming to you from Estes Park, Colorado, uh, I'm out here for a quick little weekend getaway to do some winter landscape photography. Um, main reason I'm here is probably this camera right here. This is the Hasselblad X2D that I purchased a couple weeks ago. Um, I took it out to Bryce Canyon National Park for its first shots and I enjoyed it so much that I got home and immediately booked my next trip and that happened to be here in Rocky Mountain National Park. And I've chose this park because of all the different alpine scenery throughout the United States, really this is probably the most accessible when it comes to winter hiking. Um, a lot of those places just become so snowed in that you can't do anything. And this park, they do a pretty good job at keeping the roads cleared and enough people come here that some of the shorter hikes uh, you can get to with relative ease with uh, spikes or snowshoes or whatever you need. Um, and so I actually filmed a video last night kind of talking about my itinerary for the trip. I'm just here for a couple of days, uh, but then I actually changed my plans last second um, and everything changed. So uh, I'm just, fi I figured I'd shoot a quick video just kind of recapping what I did today and then my plans for tomorrow and some of the gear I'm using. Um, so today I actually did a sunrise shot at Emerald Lake. I did a quick pass by Dream Lake where I'm going tomorrow just to kind of get a quick shot. And then I uh, took a side trip up to Hayaha Lake and the, it was like hurricane force winds up there and I didn't get a lot of photography done. I got a quick little picture of me in the scene just so I could, you know, have myself in one of my shots from the weekend. Um, but I mean, there was just wind blowing everywhere, like spikes of little ice like, blowing into your face, just ripping your face apart. It, it was pretty horrible. Um, but you know, that's what you get when you do winter landscape photography. Obviously the winter is not a friendly time of year as far as the elements go. And uh, if you want to take pictures of it, you have to pay the price. Um, so that was, that was a good time. Um, for tomorrow, though, I'm going to go back up the same way I went yesterday to Dream Lake, which is probably the most iconic lake in Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, and tomorrow, what's special about this lake is the moon is going to be setting directly over the peaks behind the lake. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a truly epic setting. I, I don't know of many settings more epic than right in front of Dream Lake. Um, now, typically when it comes to moon rises and moon sets, which is kind of my niche in photography, I bring out the big guns, which would be the 800 PF on my Nikon Z7, or in some cases where I want a little bit more of the landscape in the shot, my 500 PF. Um, but in this case, where we're kind of right up against the peaks that we're shooting, and where the bigger scene is more epic to look at than some little small segment of it that you would get with the big lens. Um, I think I'm going to do this with the Hasselblad and it's just going to be more of a general landscape shot that happens to have a small little moon in it, which will really add a lot of uh, punch to a photo that's already going to be cool without the moon. Um, so I'm trying to decide what lens to use with this. Um, as far as my Hasselblad setup, I bought this as part of the lightweight field kit used through B&H. Um, it came with the 45P and the 21 XCD lens. Um, so I use a little bit of both of these today. And then since I felt a little bit limited by these focal length, especially in medium format where these convert to roughly a 17 millimeter full frame equivalent and a 36 millimeter full frame equivalent, which are both relatively wide uh, lenses, I went ahead and picked up the 90 uh, millimeter lens um, and uh, this comes out to about a 71 millimeter equivalent, which I think between those three, I mean, that does still feel a little bit limiting coming from full frame where you have zoom lenses that go way higher than that. Um, I did a comprehensive, and as part of my research of whether to buy this camera or not, I did a comprehensive analysis of all the focal lengths I've ever used ever since I started doing real photography. And I found that for the most part, except in the cases where I'm doing my, my big gun stuff, the 800 millimeter, the 500 for like my moon stuff or wildlife, if I take that out of the picture and just look at landscape photography, that these three lenses more or less are gonna do the job. And in the cases where you need a little bit more reach, I mean, with 100 megapixels, you can crop. And so that 90 millimeter lens, if I really want some extra punch, uh, I can crop that thing and, and essentially becomes a 200 millimeter lens. Um, so that's kind of the gear I'm running with. Today I also went out looking for elk and I was able to find a few. 
Um, so that's where I use the 800. Um, I generally use this as more of a roadside photography lens. It's kind of my go-to for the moon stuff I do. Uh, but you know, if I'm doing a short hike and wildlife is my primary goal, I'll still bring this along, but it's kind of uh, it's kind of a hassle to bring. It doesn't really fit in my backpack, so you got to bring the separate carrying case, and it's a it's pretty heavy. I mean, they they make this thing lighter than any other 800 in existence, but it's still heavy. Um, my my more general walk around wildlife lens is this 500 PF. I take this on the majority of my hikes. Um, I like to be prepared for wildlife. I don't consider myself like a hardcore wildlife photographer by any means, but you know. One of these days, I know I'm going to be on a hike and I'm going to see a cougar and I want to make sure I get a good shot of it when that happens. So that's why this thing comes along with me. Um, and then for the hikes where I'm really trying to save weight, but I still want to be prepared in some way, shape or form for wildlife. That's where I bring the 300 PF. It's considerably lighter than those other two. And so this is kind of, if I just got to have something, but I do not want it to weigh me down, I go to the 300. And also the 300 does serve a purpose. Um, sometimes you just want to include more of the environment in your wildlife shots. You know, everyone thinks of wildlife photography as like the portraits where you're like punched right into their face. But sometimes, you know, including more of the environment can actually be a more interesting result. And so this is a nice one to have for that. Um, so for tomorrow, I'm going to do Dream Lake. Um, we'll see how it goes. I, I, you know, I was going to add a little bit more to the itinerary and do a second hike tomorrow, but then I remembered I, I live in the real world and I have a real job that doesn't include photography and, uh, I want to get home at a reasonable hour on Sunday. So I'm just, I'm just going to keep it nice and quick. I'm going to go get my sunrise moonset shot at green at dream Lake. Hopefully it goes smoothly. And then the eight hour drive back to salt Lake and back to real life. So just rolling back into town after uh, the Rocky Mountain National Park trip. Sometimes I forget the toll that these long road trips can take and uh, doing it two weeks in a row like I did is a bit over the top and a bit much, honestly. I, you know, I, I, I love photography, but I need to do it in doses. 